And then the other room off the main entrance. At the moment in the model, we just have a very blank plinth, but what's gonna go on top of this? The plinth is, as I call it, the, the, the room, I call it the inspiration room. I mean, it's, it's, it's more talking about the, the process of, of what are um, objects that uh, uh, mean something important to me. And, and on that plinth, I decided to, uh, to put primarily my collection of stones that I've been collecting over many, many years, mm -hmm. even as a child and, and, and kept them all these years and I still collect stones is how I display those stones to give some suggestions um, over the process with which I design. So I decided to kind of focus on one type of object of this collection to communicate that process and the way that I think. It's about obsession, it's about looking for the perfect uh, shape mm -hmm. in nature and, and allowing nature to become the designer, mm -hmm. but uh, still looking for perfection in nature, which is quite contradictory at yeah. the same time. I mean, what is the perfect shape? Because the first stone was a round stone, no? Am I it had always that? been a round sphere. Right. I mean, even as a teenager, I remember sort of always looking down, you know, whenever I would walk in in the fields or on the beach, and mm -hmm. I would always look for the perfectly uh, round uh, mm -hmm. uh, stone. And, and what I could see sometimes, which would excite me hugely, was this kind of form that looked so promising. And then when I would pick it up, the disappointment of actually uh, not having the same shape reflected on the other side. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it was absolutely perfect or near perfect. So it had passed the test. Uh, to be part of my collections. But now you no longer only collect round stones. No, I, I, <laughs> I think the, the collection extended um, over the years to, to different things, but it was always yeah. about um, uh, questioning the role of nature as the designer. I mean, one collection of stones that I have is this uh, volcanic uh, pebbles that I collected um, uh, from a beach in uh, Mani in the Peloponnese. In, Greece, and, and they all have these uh, sediments trapped between, you know, these volcanic rock. But through the wear, they, these um, thin layers um, of white sediment have become just really extremely finely and beautifully painted mm -hmm. lines onto these stones. And, and some of them are, are just cut the stone in half, and, and some of them are just the circle. So depending on how they where uh, over the years or how they were over the years then, then, then they acquired these different uh, sort of uh, uh, gestures uh, of these fine uh, white lines. So there's, there's one configuration on the plinth of, so of following the lines somehow. Groups, yeah. There was this perfect stand given to you by Neoptolemus, wasn't there? Yeah, that's, uh, that was an interesting story because in one of the field trips that I went with him looking for uh, something else, looking for fossils, mm -hmm. he said to me, I'll take you one day to um, help you find fossils and how you identify rocks that you can uh, split in half and find a fossil. But, but it was so uneventful and it was so disappointing because we didn't actually find anything. And at the end of the day, as we were walking uh, back to the car, um, suddenly he kind of bent and picked up uh, uh, a pebble from, from, uh, uh, from the field near the car and, and it was a perfectly round uh, sphere. And he offered it to me and he said to me, here you go, you can't beat nature. Is that the roundest stone in your collection um, still? I made a piece uh, many years later, in 2014, I had an exhibition in Cyprus and, and I decided to actually uh, scan, 3D scan mm -hmm. that stone and uh, scale it up and carve it again in stone. Um, the outcome was a stone this size and, and this is what I figured out that actually is not, not perfectly good. round. And it was a gesture, for, I think for me, um, not to prove anything, but yeah. as um, really understanding that, that at the end of the day, um, there is a beauty behind this. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea that you, you, you can't control nature, you mm -hmm. can't expect that level of perfection.